This is a video to kind of step you through some of the things that are in Module 4 of the Foundations of Programming course uh, that seems to be one of the more difficult modules, at least from the questions and all that I'm getting from it. So I thought I would just do this uh, video where I'm going to try to do a little bit of everything that's in that module. Uh, Probably not in order, uh, because I'm just going to kind of go in based on where people seem to have the questions from. So I am working in the Python IDLE that you can download to your computer. And I'm going to work in that rather than Buzz, because this one, it lets me make it larger. So that I think it's a little easier for you to see on there. So we're going to try it with this font. And um, if this font isn't good, then we'll just do it with a different one. Okay, so here I have created a list. So the way this Python IDLE works, you have the file where you, this is the editor window here. And then this is the shell. This is where, uh, when it runs the program, this is where I'll see the output. Or um, you, I could also just type in, straight out Python commands and run them from here without saving it. Um, if I wanted to like run a line of code, test it, and then copy it over into the this file where I can save it. So anyway, um, all right, so let's get going on this. So I have created a list that I've called test scores just to be my example here. So let's talk a little bit about the list. So first off, if I want to look at everything in a list uh, one at a time, then I'm going to use a for loop. So here I'm going to do, whoops, going to do for and then I'll do i in range and then I want this for loop to run the same number of times as I have items in my list, all right? And so for that, I use len, and then the list name in parentheses for that, and then of course my colon for my for loop. Um, the Python IDLE also does the auto indentation, so you can see there, it automatically indented it for me. Um, so the first thing is I want to just, I'm going to print, say I want to print the item itself. And I know you can just say print and then put the list name in there, but I'm kind of stepping you through so you can see how this for loop thing works with a list, because that seemed to be one of the sticking points that people um, had with this. So I'm going to print. All right, and then if I want it to print a specific item in the list, I'll use the list name. Whoops. And then in brackets is where it is wanting to see the index number. So that's like the position number. They call it an index, but it's like the position. And remember, in a list, the first position is has the assigned value of zero, right? The index value is zero for that. So here I'm going to use the for loop variable. So it's going to be I and then have it print. Okay, so now I'm going to, and in this, for this IDLE, you have to save it before it will run it. So I'm going to save. Okay, and then I'm going to run. And so here it popped open a new window for me. And you can see it printed all of the um, items. So I'm going to move this over. All right, a little bit there. So we can still see that. Okay, so that's printing the value that is stored in there. Okay, so now say in addition to that, I want to print the actual index number so I want to print and it's so I'm going to tell it I want to print 
um, the I value and I want it to print the and I've stored numbers in here so I'm gonna cast them as strings all right so that'll print the I and then that now I want there to be separation between them so I'm gonna put some spaces all right and then I may have to play around with this so then I'm gonna now I want to let's all right so let me run or well I'm gonna put a header in there too so let's do print and then I'm gonna say index because that's the that's the position they call it the index and then I want to do some space in there and again I may have to play around with this and then um, oh wait no I can just do space and then I'll do value value for what's in the um, what's in there what's actually in the list all right so let me run this save and run okay so I need fewer spaces let's try that okay save and run ah there we go okay so there you can see the index again that's the position so at position zero there's a value of 62 position one value of 80 position 2 value of 75 and so forth okay so hopefully that maybe will clear clear up any confusion that you might have had from the lesson about how a list works because that index value that being able to pull a specific position can be really helpful so for example and let's just um all right, I'm going to remove this. All right. And then, so in the uh, list lesson, right, it had you where you could do a couple of things with the list. So one of the things you could do is you could uh, delete a specific value out of there. So DEL and then list name and then whichever position you do it by the position so say I wanted to delete the third score which is going to be index 0 1 2 index 2 okay so and then to just check right then I'm going to tell it to print and here I wanted to just print it all at once not one line at a time like I did before so here is where I can use the print print and then do the list name in there okay so now save and run all right so if we go down there looking down here at the bottom we will see that it removed the 75 okay and another thing it had was if you wanted to add something on to the end okay so let's say um, uh, test scores dot append and I'm going to add uh, to that, let's give me a good grade, a 100. Okay, so let's see if I do file, save, and then I'm going to run that module. And then you'll see down here, right? So it has, now look at that, see? If the 75 is back in there and that's because 
I didn't remove it again. So when I reran the code, I was starting back with my original list, right, and adding the 100 onto it. Um, so that's why the 75 pops back up in there is because I didn't I didn't actually change the this here. I didn't rewrite that or anything to get rid of the 75. Okay, um, all right, so let's see, uh, say I wanted to, and let's do, we have if statements in here. So let's say um, I wanted to uh, create a new list, and I'm going to call it, uh, we'll call it, good scores okay and I'm just gonna and I'm just gonna set it up as an empty list right as at first okay then I'm gonna do um, for whoops for I in in range and then again we'll do I want it to look at everything that's in the list length of test scores okay colon all right so now all right I want to look at it's going to pull the the score and I want to say if um, the item I'm looking at, so that's going to be test scores, bracket, I, okay, if that is, we'll say greater, whoops, greater than, and I'm going to put just a space in there to make it easier to look at. If test scores is greater than, um, uh, let's look at the ones, let's say above an 80, and let's go greater than or equal to 80. Okay, then we want it to um, add it to the good scores list. So I'm going to do good scores dot append. And then that value. Okay, so it's going to look if, it, if it's greater than or equal to eighty, it's going to add it to my good scores list. And then once that's done, I'm going to come back, get outside of my loop, and I want to print. good scores okay um, and again note I'm not in this case I'm not removing anything from test scores on this one I'm just creating a new list with my good scores all right so let's save that save and then run Okay, now, all right, look and see what that did. So this is good because this shows us how it worked. It printed what was in the list each time that it looped, okay? So even if it didn't add anything to good scores, because this print statement is inside this for loop, right it's going to print every time it uh, loops okay and so so here all right so that's why you can see that it printed it once for every item 
every time it looked at something in the list, it printed good scores, the updated version of it. Okay, so now just for to kind of look at what if, what if I put the print statement, because being able to trace code and predict the output, output is a good thing to do. So here, now I've moved the print statement inside the if. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's, let's see. See if you can predict while I am saving what you think is going to happen now. Okay, all right. And if I run it, yeah, look at that. So now it only printed when I added a score to the good scores list, right? Which makes sense. Anything that's inside this if statement will only execute if that condition is true. Okay, so that's why here it only executed when the test score was greater than or equal to 80 on there. Okay, um, so then, and so these are, this greater than or equal is an example of what they call a relational operator in the lesson. So there's a vocab term for you. Now, Another type of operator you had was um, a logical operator. So let's see, let's come up with an example of how I can use that. So let's say I'm going to make a different list and I'm going to call this eh, scores. All right, so now, all right, so I'm still running the test scores. So now I want to say if, so my eh scores are where I'm going to say an eh score is if it's above 65, if it's between 65 and 75, right? We'll just say eh, that's okay. It's an okay score. Okay, so so now I want it to be above 65. So if it's greater than or equal to 65, all right, and then I want both of these things to be true. So I'm going to do and the test scores is uh, less than, so less than or equal to 75, then I'm doing my new list, E, H, H, H scores, and I'm going to add that to it, and then I'm going to print E, H, H, H scores. But now this print statement I'm going to take it out of the if, and I'm also going to take it out of the for loop. So now, being outside the for loop, it should only print at the very end. Okay, so I should only see this print after it's gone through that loop. Okay, so let's see that. File, save, run, run module. Okay, and then down here, we see it pulled all of the test scores that are greater than, six, greater than or equal to 65 and less than or equal to 75. And so again, these greater than or equal, less than or equal are relational um, operators. And then the and, the or, the not is a... Uh, is a logical operator on there. Okay, all right, so then let me think what else uh, do we need to do? 
We did ants. Okay, and so, all right, so say we wanted to um, look at each score and we wanted to categorize it. Um, and so, and have it, and I want it to do uh, more than one thing depending on which condition is met. So this is where I'm gonna use the else and the elifs, okay? If I only have two possibilities, so let's say if the test score is um, greater than or equal to 60, all right, and I'm not going to use my, I'm going to get do away. So we're not doing a, another list, so I'm going to take that out. All right, we're just focusing on here. So if it's greater than or equal to 60 and greater than or equal to 60. Okay, so we're going to do an if else there. And then let's get rid of this part there. Okay, so if the test score is greater than or equal to 60, then I want to print And we're going to say str, and then I want this, the actual item, copy that and paste it there, so that, whoops, sorry plus, and then um, is a passing score. Okay. And all right. Oh, it moved my thing over. Sorry. Oh. Okay, now we can see the whole thing. Okay, and then, uh, all right, and then I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to get that, get rid of that. And that is a passing score. Then now I want to say, uh, oops, put that in there. Okay. And then go back. Then I want to say else. All right, and then I'm going to copy, go down here, because I'm going to use this one again. Okay, is not a passing score. We'll do a frowny face <laughs> there oh wait okay yeah it's in between quotes so it won't do that okay so now all right let me save that uh, there okay let's run this back here and we're Okay, so now we see, all right, each time it went through, um, and did it go through all of them? Oh, okay, so I only had one that was not a passing score. Okay, all right, so that's, so there's an example of an if and an else, right? I only have two things, two conditions that I want it to respond to. It either meets the condition or it doesn't. Okay, now if I have more than that, so say I wanted 
to uh, do like the grade uh, so to do the grade ranges in there so I would say if it's uh, less than or equal to 60 or greater than or equal to 60 um, and the test scores I let me store that in there and all right let me make this big while I'm doing this okay okay and that is um, less than 70 print is a D okay and then then I'll go back and so here's where I use the LFs because I've got multiple conditions so if and again I can take this code right here whoops grab that oh wait no inside okay all right and drop that here and say less than or equal to 70 or greater than or equal to 70 less than 80 um, then I want to do that print statement I should have just copied the whole thing see and then there uh, print that is a a C and then again now I can just let's take both of those lines right there Control C all right and so this one we've got 80 and 90 and that would be a B and then again one more time paste that and so we would have 90 and then greater than or equal to 100 is an A and then I can leave that and so the else has to be the last one so I end it with the else statement there okay so hopefully save that Let's drop back down let's run okay so there's an example of where I'm using an if an else and an elif to kind of clarify when you would use those on there okay so the only other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to do a one where you're looking through your list to find a match okay and so let me clear out my for loop and so here I want to do um, so I'm going to ask the user for a test score all right so I'm going to say we'll call this variable your score and that's going to equal and I want it to be an integer and it's going to be input from what was your score on the math test okay and one more got it okay up oh, here let me 
and we'll go big on this. All right, so now I have this. So here I want to take and I'm going to um, see if my score matched their score. Okay, so, um, so let's go in here and we'll say just for my um, check to see if matches for i and re okay so we got our for loop set up same as before and now we're going to say we'll say if and then again we're doing test scores i now here all right so look at this up here i use an equal to store an input into that variable name. So a single equal sign is, is assigning a value to something. All right, I'm going to change something because I'm putting a new value into it. I'm creating it or I'm changing a value into it. Here, where I am comparing, I don't want to change anything. I don't want to store anything. So that's where we use the other relational operator which is the double equals so when i use a double equal sign that means i'm going to compare one thing to another so if test scores equal equal right if it's the same as the user's input okay then i want to print that was my score to okay and then okay and then if it didn't I'll say else and then I'm gonna print my score was different okay all right so file save all right let's go back here again i want to run the module and so it, here it says what was score on the math test and I'm gonna say let's put one in that I think there was an 85 in there so I'm gonna say 85 oh okay all right now whoo why'd they do that well let's look and see ah because I put the I had that print uh, segment. Oh, I didn't have an 85. Okay, so that's why it's saying my score is different. But my print statement, again, was inside the loop. So every time it made that comparison, right, then it, it did that print thing. All right, so what would I do? What if I don't want it to do that? I don't want it to print it until the end. All right, and so what I can do then, a way to do that, is to um, to tell it I can. Well, there's several things I can do. Uh, but let's do one where I'm going to create a variable up here, another variable. Um like a, a binary variable and so uh, we're going to say I'm going to call it match equals and I'm going to set it initially to a zero which is like saying false that that's there's no match and so 
what I want to do is I want to look and that if if the test score all right so we're gonna go I'm gonna change this all right let's go down here all right so if the test score is so if there is a match I'm gonna set that variable equal to one Okay, and so on this one, I'm not going to have an else in my for loop because I don't want it to do anything else. All I want it to do is to look at each test score. If it finds a match, then set match equal to one. Then I'm going to go and outside of the for loop. So once I've exited that for loop, then I'm going to say if match is equal to double equal because it's a comparison one then I want it to print and I need to get that back lined up there okay print that was my score two else I want it to print my score was different okay so now right I have a little trigger in here and my trigger is if there's a match it's going to change the value of that variable then once I've looked through the list and I'm done doing that in the for loop then I'm going to make a comparison and I think my spacing let me go back and check that oh that looks better there I think I got an extra space in there okay file save all right, and let's run. Whoops. And this time, let's see, let me look. There's a 75 in there. Okay. So let me make this bigger so we can see it a little better. What was your score on the math test? I'm going to say 75. And it says that was my score too. All right, let's try it. Uh, let me go back and let's run it again. Run module. Okay, what was your score on the mass test? I think I said, uh, what did I say, 85 before, and my score was different. Okay, so going back to look at that, there we go. So that's kind of an approach you can use if you want to look through a list to look for a match and then wait until after you've made that comparison, then um, figure out okay uh, what you want to print in response to if there was a match or not a match okay so I think I've covered all the module 4 topics here with these examples and hopefully that will be helpful for you